Oh, good morning. I thought today we'd try something like Yummy Noob's uh, famous It Came From Crazed list. list. I was just having a look around my local Facebook and I saw some what he would describe as truly wretched motorcycles. So I just thought we'd go through and have a bit of a look at what's available at the moment. So we'll just scroll through my uh, poor old all-in-one is stressing what's that Ducati Paso no we'll let that one go I, I don't want to say anything about about Ducatis I quite like the bikes but what do we have here 1998 Yamaha looks like an XJ 900s diversion now converted to standard bike shaft drive I mean it just means he's probably dropped it and cracked the fairings and taken them off so I mean what do you say about this 1998 so it's 24 years old is worth two thousand dollars, sixty-seven thousand miles on it. It's not a bad bike. It's not a good bike. It's just, what do you know? What do you do with a bike that's that old? Well, it's eighteen thousand for a Harley, the same age. But I'm not here to put shit on Harleys either. I don't have an issue with them. I would probably never spend the money to buy one. But here we go. This looks a bit more realistic. A two thousand and seven Kawasaki Vulcan for five grand. So it's the the 900, it's got 40,000 Ks on it, so a few Ks, but not too many. You know, like I said, big engine. Looks like it's been kept in fairly good condition. Um, reasonable offers considered. So they're actually trying to sell it. Scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. What have we got? Now here's one I've been <clears throat> actually looking at for myself. The issue is that this is uh, 500 kilometres from where I live, not 100 like it says. Um, now if you recall, I had one of these. I'm sure this one's not a 2022, not for that price. But the one I actually picked up for $500 had a bent subframe as this one says. Although it it's really not descriptive enough on what they consider the subframe because... I mean, we just put a bar across the one I had and bent it back out straight. So the bent subframe was the least of the issues. Oh my goodness, what's this? 1997 Honda Shadow. So this is a 25-year-old 600cc motorcycle that they've spent far too much on. But it says it needs new brushes in the handles bars. Well... What brushes could it possibly need in the handlebars? I've never seen brushed handlebars. And the indicators don't work, but it's only a wiring issue. Really, only a wiring issue. How do they figure that out? No, look, this thing is just... It's not enough bike for that sort of money. Oh, here's an interesting one. This is not really neither here nor there. Um, this one, it'd be hard to put a figure on. I mean, it's done 118,000 kilometres, but these bikes will do another 118,000 kilometres in the next 10 years without even blinking. But is it is it worth the money? Is it worth anything? You know, you're really... Yeah, it's just so hard to say when you get to, to that sort of motorcycle with those sort of kilometres and... She's a hard one to call. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Scrolling. Boulevard. All the two strokes I seem to find are eighty CC. Oh my god, what's that? What has he got to say about it? Uh, bike is low, powerful, and a pleasure to ride. Yeah, no. Nah. Originally built by 138 Sogs in USA, it came to Australia, was further modified and finished by Fitter and Turner. Yeah, no, I don't think it was finished. Um... Not at all finished off, maybe. But, yeah, no, that's just atrocious. I... Oh, look. And, and 
that muffler is just not suited to the motorcycle look at all. It's got, I know, some old antique brass headlight, handmade brass front mudguard, Joe Hunt Magneto, it really makes this bike crackle. I mean, what the hell does that mean? Does that mean that when you decelerate, the exhaust crackles? External remote oil filter, that'll be that red thing behind the pipe, maybe? Yeah, that's a bit... A scream and eagle exhaust? What, one pipe? That's obviously straight through with a shitty eBay can on the end? Anyway... I'll just make a bit of a derivative here. This is what I would actually like to pick up. Um, this one's been up for a while. I'm kind of hoping I might be able to make him a, a slightly lower offer sometime in the future. Uh, 2014, got $10,000 on it, $10,000 he's asking. I'm hoping I might pick it up for about seven if I get to that point where I can offer him that money. I've not actually ridden one of these because I'm a big, I, I know that you have to ride a motorcycle before you buy it, there's been a couple of bikes I've ridden that were just disappointments when I rode them after I initially thought I wanted to buy them, but on the test ride I decided no. But this one's just so much like my old K75 that I think it'll be what I want. And there's my old K75. Beautiful bike. I just, it was too low, my knees couldn't handle it, so I had to get rid of it. Now, here's another bike. This is actually one of the ones that I, I rode and was disappointed in. So I just felt like um, I could feel the opposing cylinders rocking from side to side while I was riding it. These bikes are very rare for them to come up. They're universally disliked, except for people who own them, and they very, very rarely part with them. Now here's another interesting faux chopper sort of thing. This uh, 2010 Honda Fury. This is another bit of a strange one. This bloke's asking a uh, new price for this, and it's you now 12 years old, and strangely enough, I was offered a brand new 2010 model in 2014 for $10,000 because the shop had had it on the floor for four years, absolutely couldn't sell it. So this bloke's asking more now than I was offered for a new one, but then you can't buy these anymore. This fella was gonna come on this ride with us. Uh, but he ended up not coming, so this is just a few mates and I. We went for a bit of a ride up to Goo and outside the pub. So, yeah, it would have been nice to see the Honda come along. So, let's see what else we can find. Here we go. 2010 V-Star. Um, asking a lot of money for this. So my pride and joy to a new edition, 650 classic in the bobber, so it's a lambs approved, so, you know, that sort of makes it a no for me. He has spent far too much money on this. I think there's a detailed receipt. I think the bobber kit was $3,200 or something. And kind of, if you take that money off what he's asking for it, you probably back it somewhere around the the correct price for this bike um but yeah it's a lot of money to ask i suppose like you you know maybe i'm a little bit biased i like a larger that's what it looked like originally i'd like a larger capacity engine on my motorcycles um these things are lamb to prove which means they're low power so yeah it's not for me but maybe someone will like it but I don't think they'll like it $10,000. Okie dokie, here's a little trial bike. This is normally the sort of thing I buy. Now we've got a 2008 XT 250. Motor runs fine, needs new suspension seat lights and a good clean. Relatively low kilometres, but has had a hard farm life. So, uh, depending on, uh, you know, how much you need to spend on the suspension, <coughs> this is probably a good buy. This is probably worth two or $3,000. Oh, my Lord, what's this? I think this is what Yami describes as a wretched little bike. SRX 250. 
Um, pull out a storage crank for the jump starter, but no fuel. This bike might run straight up on here to all the CLC, but what do you do with it? You know, it's 33 years old. It's a 250. You don't have to ride 250s on your learners anymore, but it is a cheap point to start with, although by the time you put tyres and everything on it, it could run into a lot of money. Anyway, we'll pop back. We'll just have a quick peek at this Heritage soft towel. She's had a bit of work on it. I love the way that there's an exhaust on either side of the bike. I always said if I put new pipes in the Harley, they'll be on the Triumph. They'll be fish tails. Um, very rare to see a Harley with pipes on either side because of the way their exhausts work. Um, the fact that there's two separate pipes basically means that this exhaust is doing nothing for the power of this bike. <coughs> um, is it worth thirty-one thousand dollars? Look, no, but. It looks great. Someone will think that it is. Now, this is one that sort of I also don't get. I mean, Indians, this is like the third or fourth reboot of the Indians, and none of them have last long. There's a lot of money to spend on a bike that may not have any support. In the next couple of years, um, I also don't get the styling cues. I mean, you know, I ride a, a Heritage Triumph, so I guess if I was looking for that, I'd be looking for a Heritage bike. But what do I got there? P2175. Uh, yeah, I had a 175. You might have seen my old video on it. The thing about the 175s is um, the money's in the racing. And. A 175 would have to race in the 250 class anyway, so they're not really worth anything um, because they're just not competitive. Now, I know how much money you can put into one of these because I had one of these, and I wish him the best, but I think it's a little bit overpriced for what it is. Oh, Ducati Sport. I see so many of these sports the 883s they just buy them and realise that they're just nothing that great and they want to swap them or sell them or you know someone's put a lot of work into that to make it look the way it does and it looks great but there's always that oh no it's an 883 it's not you know it's still got a bigger engine than my Triumph but I'd rather ride my Triumph now, here's something that I would truly like, but I know that it would shorten my life very quickly. Uh, I'm a massive BMW fan. I absolutely love these S1000s. This is the RR. I think this came in fourth or fifth on Yami News' list of fastest motorcycles available today. Not this one. This is an older one, but currently. So... You know, these things are no toy, they're no commuter. They're a serious motorcycle. <sighs> What's this dick doing? I mean, seriously. You've got a Chinese piece of crap there. You've got one photo and it's you with no shirt on. That's really going to, yeah. That makes people want to race out and buy that motorcycle. Listed 10 weeks ago, I'm not surprised. Who would go and talk to that idiot about that? Well, what's that I see over there in that corner? Someone else just got high hopes for a small bike. Okay, full rebuild of ZS185, all new parts and tyres, registered on the road. Okay, and look at the rust on the top of them fork legs. Yeah, no, these things are $4,500 brand new. Um, it doesn't really matter how much work you've done to it. It's just a farm bike. It's not competitive by any means. Oh, what have we found here? A Yamaha 
Virago. Yeah, this looks like it's uh, new front tire and battery, good condition, 250cc. Now, I don't know if I mentioned before, but that the way that number plate is on the side, they're not legal in any state in Australia. So, there's no way you get a roadworthy on it. Um, no information about it. Just says in good condition. Doesn't say whether it's still registered or not, whether it's roadworthy. Oh, wretched bikes. My God, look at this. He's got a massive list of stuff that he's done to it. He's asking $10,000 for a bike that he's essentially ruined. Pro race exhaust, rear sets, uh, German clip-on handlebars, Rizoma bar and mirrors, Ducati Monster, front wheel and brakes, and a K1200 rear wheel. So he's running mismatched wheels. And I don't know, how does that intake not hit the wheel when you turn? You know, I had a K75, it was low enough. This thing is just ridiculous. I, I can't understand. I mean, I understand people want to customize a bike. I've done work to my um, Triumph that probably other people wouldn't like if they were to look at it or ride it. But I'm not going to then go and say, oh, I spent 100 hours on this. My terms worth this much. I want ten thousand dollars for this bike. I'm going to go. Well, I've changed this bike from what it should have been, so I'm going to have to reduce the price, as such. But yeah, I, I don't know. Sometimes I think people who do things like this probably should do time in jail for crimes to motorcycles. But everyone has the right to do what they want with their bike, and I mean, maybe he just doesn't want to sell it. Maybe he's had the ultimatum that it's got to go and has decided to put such a high price on it because it'll never sell. Anyway, what other BMWs have we got? Just on bike sales now. I'll have a quick look. Uh, 800ST. Yes, that's what I like. Oh, look at that one in the M colours. That's gorgeous. Yeah. I wish it was a bit closer to where that one is. 1300 GT. Oh, that horrible thing again. And that F800S when it loads. Yeah, that doesn't look too bad. But anyway, I probably shouldn't just stay here looking at BMWs all day. I will let you all go.